Welcome to Early Bird Picker. My name is Rafa. I'm a reseller on eBay, Facebook Marketplace, and Amazon. Currently in the Early Bird Picker nest. So like always, that means this is the weekly What Sold video. If you're new to my channel, first of all, I wanna say thank you so much for checking my channel out. My channel is all things reselling. I make a lot of different categories of reselling videos, but every week I put out at least two What Sold videos. The weekly one, which are sales from Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. And then the weekend video, which are sales from Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. It's Monday evening. I have eight things going out. Six sales on eBay, two on Facebook Marketplace. From my sales today, I have two items that I was in particular wrong about their value. One worked out in my favor. One did not. You know the drill. Let's get them. Sold. Set of three, Nerf Modulus Close Combat Upgrade Kit. Not sure if you can tell in the video, but these are foam. When it comes to reselling, I have a really strong affinity for reselling Nerf guns and Nerf accessories. A couple years ago, when I first got into reselling, the first major score that I can remember, the first like big lot of something that I bought for a really good deal, was a lot of like maybe 30 or 40 Nerf guns for 25 bucks. It was an incredible deal. None of them were just like super, super valuable, but for that many guns that were especially kind of the larger size ones, it was a really good deal. It was a while before I had my channel, so you're not going to find it on my channel, but always since then, I've always just loved flipping Nerf just because sometimes you can find stuff that's really good. In the last year or so though, I have really been striking out at finding Nerf guns that are valuable. A lot of times people at garage sales, are, they know what they're worth and they're just asking a lot of money or just some Nerf guns are just not worth uh, the cost to the buyer to buy the item plus the shipping for something that's kind of just larger and sometimes heavy. What I have done all right with Nerf this year though are flipping accessories. It can be a little surprising sometimes how well the accessories sell, what value they can bring. So at a garage sale a few weeks back, I picked up a box of Nerf accessories, paid five bucks. They had a lot of Nerf guns, I passed on those. They knew what they were worth, they're asking like 10 or 15 bucks, just no room to make profit on them. But I did take my chances on the box of accessories, just thought it'd be fun to kind of sort through, see what'd be valuable. A little over a week ago, I finally sorted through it. I was gonna sell like with like, so I was gonna sell the scopes together, the grips together, the shoulder stocks together for the most part. Happened across these foam pieces. Oh. While I love flipping Nerf, I am not a Nerf expert. So I saw these foam pieces. As you can see, they're in pretty poor condition. The paint is largely missing in a lot of spaces on them. The foam is kind of crinkled. This one might even be worse. The knife, it's got a little bit of a tear right there. I don't want to open it too much because I don't want to just completely ruin it. These two pieces right here, I tossed in the trash. Without looking them up, I was just like, these are such poor condition, they're foam, these aren't worth reselling. I don't know why I deemed the knife worth reselling, but I went ahead and looked that up. I think I probably looked it up with a Google image search, and what came up are these three pieces together. Apparently this set is unbelievably scarce, rare, hard to find, discontinued, all of those major SEO uh, catchphrase terms. Quick search on eBay, none were currently listed, none sold in the last three months. This is where the WorthPoint app comes in handy. That app shows you years and years of sales history data. For this closed combat kit, in new condition, it sold up to 300 bucks. In used condition, up to over 90. Needless to say, pull them out of the trash pretty fast. Obviously mine aren't the greatest condition. Out of the $5 lot, I split up all the items, cost of good per item, 38 cents, total of $1.14 in this lot. I had this item on auction for a week with no bids because the amount that I was asking for the base bid was pretty high. My typical strategy on that, when no one bids, I turn it to buy it now, sold immediately $37.77 plus shipping on eBay, even in this pretty low grade condition. It's really good profit, but in the grand scheme of things, not just a super ton of money, but needless to say, I was wrong on this one and I'm so happy that I ended up looking it up for three pieces of foam that are in pretty poor condition. That's really good money in my book. Let me just leave you with this. This knife right here that's foam by Nerf with the broken tip likely just sold for a higher selling price and higher profit than this major Bolo Cutco knife. Let that boggle your brain for a minute. It's definitely boggling my brain. Sold. Vintage Woolrich, new tags. Also new defects, men's hunting shooting shirt. 
I really love seeing these vintage tags from companies, even like Walmart. Where I live, Walmart doesn't even put tags on any things that say Walmart anymore, so that's one way that I knew that these were vintage. However long ago this was, this shirt was $37.94, so at some point they were selling pretty quality stuff, or at least for pretty high price, back in the day when they were promoting layaway. The back's in pretty nice condition with some venting. Cost of goods, five bucks at a garage sale from a year or two ago. When I say that I can be slow to list clothing, I mean it. Pretty recently just got this listed. It sold for 40 bucks plus shipping on eBay. That said though, when it's vintage clothing that I'm slow to list, I do not stress out about it because in my head, that vintage piece is only getting more and more valuable as time goes on. Sold. New sealed in the plastic. Usborne peek inside. Six book box set. This is a second one of these, and like I said on the last one, I listed it on both Amazon and used like new condition because of the crinkling with the cardboard here. The box is too big, and then I listed it on eBay as well. Cost of goods, 11 bucks at Goodwill. This one also sold on eBay, 40 bucks plus shipping. Sold. Vintage New Old Stock Pilot Precise Ball Liner. Brown ink. Lot of nine. Cost of goods, a dollar eight from the new old stock closet that I picked. Sold 19 bucks, 23 cents plus shipping on eBay. Had a bit of dilemma on this particular new old stock office supply. Here's the deal. These are ball liner pins. A lot of times those type of pins can dry up, especially if they're vintage. They pretty clearly appear new to me. My dilemma was should I sell them in new condition without having tested them. I tested one pin out of each lot that I was selling. I made a tiny small line to make sure that it immediately started with brown ink. All three did and so I went ahead and sold them in new condition. For given what these were and I was asking such a high selling price, I was just really nervous to send these out without having tested them whatsoever and that they'd show up to the buyer and they'd test them, be completely dry. That was my selling dilemma on that one. I just felt it was too big of a risk not to do a tiny little mark with a pin. Sold. Lot of two. Vintage New Old Stock Pentel 0.5 millimeter mechanical pencil and a tube of spare lead. Cost of goods, 12 cents, also from the New Old Stock closet. Sold $17.77 plus shipping on eBay. That closet is really paying off. Sold. Lot of one, two, three. Bombas, size extra small. Black multicolored calf socks. Cost of goods, $1.50 at a thrift store. Sold $12.99 plus shipping on eBay. It's the strangest thing. There's a particular thrift store I go to. Uh, I go there once a week on the same day every week. And for the last three or four times, out of the last like five or six times I've gone, I found new in the package Bombas. Always extra small or smalls. I was pretty certain the smalls would sell. I was a little uncertain how the extra smalls would do, but I went ahead and picked them up anyway because they were such a good price and they are selling through. Just picked some up last Friday, a lot of like eight or nine extra smalls, and I'm hoping those sell pretty well too. This next one is the other one that I was wrong on that did not really work out in my favor too well. Sold. Rabbids Invasion. <laughs> Fart gun or like burp gun. Cost of goods, four bucks at Goodwill. Sold 20 bucks free shipping on Facebook Marketplace. Label costs nine bucks, take away 11. Not losing money, but here's the deal on this one. I'm really not super knowledgeable about different like toys or like mo like kids movies, like characters, that sort of thing, cartoons. I did watch a few cartoons growing up, but for the most part, I just really not that super knowledgeable. When I saw this fart gun, I thought it probably had some value, so I took a Google image search of it. Sometimes you do have to be careful with that just because you do get incorrect data sometimes. The top Google search result that came up was a current eBay listing for like 80 bucks for this identical gun. And I was like, that is awesome, major score. It was titled like Ren and Stimpy Fart Gun. I definitely remember Ren and Stimpy from when I was little, but I didn't watch it that much. Pretty sure I wasn't allowed to. So just kind of taking a glancing look at this, it pretty much hit the bill, Ren and Stimpy Fart Gun to me. 
I am pretty detail oriented though and I usually do check my work so when I got home I probably took another Google image search of it and did a little bit more digging turns out it's actually Rabbids Invasion which is like a French animated TV series or something along those lines definitely not Ren and Stimpy definitely not Ren and Stimpy and the value is nowhere near 80 bucks because when you search Rabbids Invasion fart gun or whatever type of noise making gun this is a lot of them appear on eBay it is not rare and all for under 20 bucks basically Sold a set of ultra branded trail running gaiters. You never heard of these. These actually go on trail running shoes. Makes a little bit more sense if I put my arm through there, like my like my arm is a leg. These are specifically made for ultra shoes. They're for trail running. You attach them to your shoes, and then this part goes around your ankle essentially, and it keeps out rocks and dirt when you're trail running out of your shoes. There's this Velcro piece that hooks on to the ultra trail running shoe. And then this hook hooks onto the laces. I have no idea why the reflectivity washed off after like one wear on these. These are worn once. I know that because this is another item that was mine back when I worked at the running store. If you notice, I talk a whole lot about running shoes, but I do not talk a whole lot about my running experience. It's because I just don't do a whole lot of running anymore. I actually have run two full marathons in the past, but that's been quite a while ago. When I was working there though, I thought it might be cool to get into trail running. Turns out I also don't like trail running that much, so I wore them one time. Likely got them for free. They sold for $12 free shipping on Facebook Marketplace. The shipping label is $3.75. Takeaway, eight and a quarter. Sold. And sometimes I'm really fast at listing. Just picked this up last Friday, listed it yesterday, sold less than a day. There's no method to the madness. Vintage Hanes 5050 t-shirt. Always love finding the single stitch, single stitch arm sleeves, single stitch bottom hem. Really nicely preserved St. Thomas Virgin Islands graphic. It's a really mild cracking there, but overall the graphic is in really nice condition. It's really nice, soft, thin shirt. I always do measurements on my clothing, but for sure, for certain on this one, because the tag is marked as a large, in today's day, this looks to me more like a small to a medium. Blank on the back, overall excellent condition. Cost of goods, $1.99 at a Honey Hole thrift store. Sold 23 plus shipping on eBay. Tuesday night, three sales, two on eBay, one on Facebook Marketplace. Sold. Lot of one, two. Vintage, new old stock, new without tags, sand sun hats. Seems like the longer that you're reselling vintage uh, clothing or hats, certain tags just kind of stand out to you. For whatever reason, I really love this sand sun tag. These hats were so cool to me because they have a YKK zipper on the back for the closure. So you just squeeze this and move it like that. Uh, it's like a zipper and that's how you adjust the hat. Just a little clothing tip for you, when you find a YKK zipper, that's pretty much known in the industry as the best zipper there is. If you have a stuck zipper, it's probably not a YKK zipper because they're just really well made. Flat bill with a rope. Cost of goods, six bucks total, three each at a thrift store. Sold 25 bucks plus shipping on eBay. Sold. Excellent used condition, Peter Millar, men's size large. 100% cotton polo golf shirt, striped blue. Perfect on the back as well. Cost of goods, $5.50 at Goodwill. Sold $17.77 plus shipping on eBay. Really surprised about this one. I've had it for quite a while. Everything I've ever sold other than the shirt Peter Millar has sold really fast and for really good money. I think when it comes to these polo golf shirts, the ones that do better are more like the performance ones that have some type of other material blended with the cotton that's kind of like a wicking or a stretch. Still making a little bit of money, just surprised on this one. I will say, won't be surprised if I get a return request on this one. When I saw the photo of what had sold, I thought I don't recognize that shirt at all. And so I finally figured out that it was this particular one right here. The color of my cover photo does not match the actual shirt very well at all. Another photo down the line does, but not the cover photo. Like I said, won't be super surprised if the buyer is unhappy with what they get. I don't make that mistake too often where my photos don't really match what I have in front of me. Gonna keep a closer eye on that in the future. 
I've said it before, I do not offer any returns on any of my items on Facebook Marketplace or eBay. That's just my business model. But in this situation, with the possibility of expecting a return on this one, just thought I'd share my strategy for returns. I do actually have a strategy for items like this with the selling price was under $20. If the buyer requests a return, I'm gonna immediately give a full refund and not ask for the product back. At the end of the day, this is a mistake that I realized that I made, or maybe just like an error, just the item doesn't exactly match the photos very well. That's on me, and so for something this low price, I'm not gonna mess with having them, you know, have to deal with packaging the item, taking it to the post office. If you're a regular eBay seller, it's not a big deal at all. You probably have a bundle of stuff you're taking every day, but for some people, that's a real ordeal. And it takes time out of their day. Maybe they're just not used to doing the shipping label and all that. It might take them 30 minutes. When you create that trouble for a buyer, really run the risk of getting neutral or negative feedback. I might get it anyway, but the best way to address the situation for a lower cost item like this, just let them keep the product. I don't have an exact breaking point for where I'd ask for the product back, but in my head, that's what would happen on this one. Sold. Rawlings. Model RBG36, Jose Canseco, leather baseball glove. It's kind of moderate condition. It's got someone's name written on it in Sharpie. Also on the Rawlings tag right there. If you know a way to get Sharpie off leather, let me know. I don't know of any way to do that. If you're newer into selling baseball softball gloves, the basics of what you want to make sure to list in like the title. Of course, the brand, Rawlings. Baseball and softball gloves are really great about having the model number. I hardly ever pick up any that don't have the model number. So in this case, the RBG36 is the model number. A lot of times there's a player's name associated with it. So you want to make sure to list that, Jose Canseco. When you're picking them up, you do want to check over that all the like leather, lacing, stitching, whatever you want to call that, that it's all there, complete, not cut. In the title of your listing, there's two more things that you want to include. Since, of course, baseball, you're either right or left-handed when it comes to pitching, throwing, batting, that sort of thing. Gloves are designated by the hand that you throw with. So seeing that this glove fits on my left hand, in the title, you'd want to list it as right hand throw. Abbreviation for that is RHT. The last major thing that people search for is what size the glove is. That's going to be listed in inches. You need to pick up for yourself one of these soft measuring tapes. To properly measure a baseball or softball glove, you measure from the top of the pocket of the index finger right here, straight down to the center of the heel of the glove. If you have a second person around, you might use them to help you take the photos. It makes it just a whole lot simpler. Either that or you need a third arm. It's really difficult to do by yourself. Here's a reason why a standard tape measure that's like this wouldn't work. While I am basically measuring in the right spot, the tip of the index finger to the base of the heel, there's a gap right there underneath the tape measure. As much as possible with a soft tape measure, you want to try and conform it to the well of the glove. Like I said, I don't have a third arm to help right now hold the camera, hold the glove. Really, that tape measure should be in the middle of the index finger, uh, maybe a little bit scooted over to the heel of the glove. But you get the basic idea. This is a 12-inch glove. So that's the basics of how to make a title for a baseball or softball glove. Once you have all those criteria, you're set. Cost of goods, $250. Sold 10 bucks plus shipping on Facebook Marketplace. I don't normally charge shipping on Facebook Marketplace, but occasionally when I'm listing on Marketplace, there's like a glitch. Facebook Marketplace has glitches fairly often because they're still relatively new. I guess that's why. Anyway, sometimes I can't offer free shipping. And so in this case, I charge the buyer the shipping. When selling adult baseball softball gloves on eBay, you wanna make sure to get yourself some of these. The USPS padded flat rate envelopes. Any adult glove I've ever flipped is always over a pound. So if you put in the two pound rate on eBay, the price is like eight to 15 bucks or something along those lines if you're gonna, if you're doing calculated shipping for the buyer. Every adult glove that I've ever flipped fits in those padded flat rate envelopes. If you do calculated shipping for the buyer, they pay 8.55, I think. Wednesday night, six items going out on eBay, one on Facebook Marketplace, an awesome, awesome sales day in terms of the sold price. One particular item is the reason why, you'll see. Sold. Kind of some roller coaster and mixed emotions with this one. Sony DVD player VCR. You can see the model is SLVD281P. Always on the hunt for this Bolo combo unit. Not just Sony, lots and lots of brands are good. You can find the combo units together. For starters, it's got the box, so that's awesome. 
Had to sell this one in new open box condition. Scoop this one up at Goodwill, 35 bucks, cost of goods. When I found this combo unit at Goodwill and that no one else had picked it up before me, I, just, I was just blown away. I just couldn't believe it because combo units are just such a major bolo item. Pretty much all resellers know that you're looking for those and especially if you find them what appears to be new in the box. Here's the deal on this one. Goodwill had put their sticker, 35 bucks on it, and also put another sticker on it in handwriting that said, new, unopened, do not open. Something along those lines, I don't remember exactly what it said, but it really conveyed the point that they believed it had never been opened before and instructions not to open it. In the store, I did scan it over and the tape, like the edges of the tape, that's kind of how I usually typically tell if something seems like it's factory sealed. There's probably no awesome way to know this, but you can see for more of like a home tape dispenser unit, the uh, blade pieces are really small. I don't find new sealed factory stuff very often, but it seems like whenever I have seen it, maybe if I've just bought something of my own new, that when the factory tape, it's got really large, like jagged edges. I don't know, in my book, that designates factory sealed. The tape on this one pretty much looked like that. I, of course, looked up sold comps in the store, and two had sold on eBay in the last 30 days for like $5.50 and $6.50, one plus or minus shipping. At the end of the day, though, a major, major potential for profit at cost of goods, only $35. Bucks. On top of that, none currently listed in the new condition. So I spent a few hours being super excited about my find, got it home, and I really wanted to get it listed the same night. This was just yesterday, and I thought I better check over that tape one more time, just inspect it like very, very close detail, and just really be certain that I feel like it's new condition, because for something that I'm gonna try to you know flip for around 500 or 600 bucks or so, the last thing I wanna do is sell something that I say is in new condition, but actually has been opened, used, etc. I probably spent maybe like 10 or 15 minutes inspecting the box and really just like going back and forth on a decision. Just so you know, the box now has definitely been opened. I opened it. But when I really looked close at the tape, it looked as if there was a cut in the tape like this. I, in the store, I thought that cut just went like part way, just like on one side. So it wasn't possible to have opened the entire box. And so I would still sell that in new condition. For me, my adrenaline starts pumping when I find something like this. This is the best find that I thought I'd ever found. And so I was definitely excited. And sometimes in that situation, you have blinders on, you just don't see certain aspects that you don't wanna see essentially. When I got it home, what I realized is the bottom manufacturer seal tape, that looked legit, it looked valid. The top though had two layers of tape, two strips. And that just doesn't add up for a new unopened box condition. I still really had no idea, but at the end of the day, I did not wanna sell a new five, six hundred dollar combo unit that was like used inside missing parts. Who knows what it was going to be like. It was a painful decision, but I did open it. Really, really excited to see when I opened it, everything new inside. Everything still crispy, still in like the styrofoam kind of like wrapper stuff. Clearly new. So while I was definitely disappointed that I did end up making the decision that I did think that I need to open it just to be certain, had the two layers of tape on it. At the end of the day, I'm still super excited because it sold in six hours, new open box condition, $317.77 with free shipping, UPS ground label. I've been doing this for a while now and I'm pretty aware of like what my motivation factors are, what just keep me going. I sold this at a really reasonable price compared to what other new open box condition uh, sold comps were basically. It was definitely on the lower end, possibly the lowest that any of the last like seven new open box conditions had sold in the last three months. I'm a fast nickel type of person. I wanted a really fast sale. I even offered free shipping on eBay, which you guys know I basically never do on eBay. I wanted to make this as attractive as possible to a potential buyer, so I got that sale and it worked. If you're wondering about shipping for this one, even though it's completely new, packaged really well, cardboard, everything stuffed inside, I am still gonna put it in another box. The buyer did specifically ask me to do that. I was gonna do it anyway. Fortunately, I work at a nursing home that's constantly getting medical supplies and equipment, and they get tons of these boxes every week, and they usually ask me if I want them. I think I took too many, <laughs> but, um, I think I took too many, but this box is basically a perfect fit and it's pretty sturdy, so that's what's gonna go in. The cost of the label for this one cost me $19.09. Of course, wanted to be sure that I bought insurance for this since it was over whatever UPS's like minimum coverage rate is. That cost me $4.60 to cover the cost of the item. So after I pay those shipping costs, my takeaway is $2.94.01 before seller fees.
Of course, I would have loved to see this one gone for the five to 600 rate in the new condition, but at the end of the day, that is a really, really awesome profit. And it was just a really exciting fun to get that adrenaline rush for something that actually is new in the box, just opened. Sold. Men's Brooks Brothers, basically full leather slipper. Even the outsole's leather. Went ahead and classified these. Excellent condition. Cost of goods, $9.99 at Goodwill. When I spotted these at Goodwill, I figured they probably did have some pretty good resale values. Brooks Brothers, plus the fact that they're full leather in really nice condition. I've been thrifting shoes for years though. More than anything though, they were just really curious to me. I had never seen a full leather slipper before. There's leather on the top, leather on the bottom. To me, that seems like that'd be really slick if you're walking on like hardwood floors. I don't know. But I saw that the resale value for these was really good. Most of the pair were selling for over $50, closer to 60, 70, 80 bucks. These sold within the space of about a week for $77.77 .77 plus shipping on eBay to an international buyer. Two things out of here. Sold. Sold. Vintage Original Reebok Classic High Top Freestyle. It's got the lace ups and then, of course, the Velcro. But of course, you got to say hook and loop on eBay. For the age of this particular shoe, the condition is really, really good. Probably didn't call it excellent, but like I said, for the age, really awesome. Outsole in really nice, clean condition. All right, so if you're going to pick up this shoe, you do have to be a little bit careful. I think they still make versions of this shoe that look really, really similar. And in fact, whenever I was searching for a template to use like a sell similar item on eBay, I found some that were listed as vintage in the title. I looked through the photos to compare my shoe with theirs. Their shoe tag had a QR code on it. Of course, when you're listing stuff, you want to try to be as knowledgeable and informed and basically just truthful about what you're selling. At the end of the day, we have to make our own best judgment. And so, of course, we all make mistakes. But QR codes came out in 1994 in Japan. They're used in the automotive industry. Over the period of 2006 to 2020, I worked in a specialty running shoe store for a period of 10 years, kind of in the mix of that time span. For specialty running shoes, which are the highest end shoes, the sneakers that you're going to find, which is probably where you'd find QR codes in the first place before other levels of shoes. It's really only within the last couple years that QR codes started to pop up. So I can't like know this for certain. I'm just pretty sure QR codes weren't used 20 years ago in shoes. So a lot of times in shoes, especially more recent ones, they actually do put some form of date in it. But you kind of just got to get a handle on looking and getting used to looking at vintage tags. This is definitely a vintage shoe tag just based on how simple the design is. This shoe didn't sell tonight, but we'll use it as a reference. This is the Nimbus 21. The current model is a 23, two years old. You can see this particular A6 shoe actually does have a QR code, does have the date. It's just more packed with more information. I just find that's more typical of a newer shoe, less typical of a vintage one. I thought I knew exactly what I was looking at when I picked up this A6 running shoe. Excellent used condition at Goodwill. The Asics Gel 1090, it surprised me. I'll explain a little bit more in a minute, but this shoe is basically from 2003. I started working in run specialty retail in 2006, so this particular styling of the shoe just really called out to me and just brought back memories of when I first started selling running shoes. Pretty much everything about this running shoe just screams really close to vintage. Again, let's use this Nimbus that's like two years old or so. First up, look at how much the design on the tongue has changed. This is like embroidery here. Don't really know what you'd call this, but definitely a major improvement. You can just tell it's just a newer look. Talked a little bit about before in the past running shoes. You can kind of know if they're older, if they have this kind of thicker material um, sewn onto the shoe. Newer style shoes will have basically something almost like screen printed on. They've just really cut a lot of weight out of the upper of the shoe. Anywhere they can cut weight out of the shoe without affecting the midsole cushion too much, they're going to do it now. This one on the left is the older shoe. The one on the right is the newer one. The other major change you can see, way more deep flex grooves cut here in the outsole of the newer shoe. This black rubber here is carbon rubber. It's really hard and durable. It's meant to withstand like the impact of road running, basically. Here's the deal on the carbon rubber, though. It's not very flexible. You can see there's not many cutaways in the rubber for the forefoot to flex really well. Same thing on the heel. Newer shoes are making a lot more flexible, more bendable trying to allow the foot move in a more natural pattern, basically. A lot more deep cuts in the outsole rubber of a newer shoe. Here's the only questionable thing about this shoe. This is a newer style tag. No QR code, but definitely newer. 
The Asics Gel 1090 is a third tier running shoe. Typically try to only pick up second tier and above, but this one was just really such nice condition. Cost of goods, only five bucks got it home and did my more thorough research looking up the like, specific style code and everything like that pretty shocked to see this particular shoe on asics website currently running shoe companies do this occasionally just like any company they track years and years of sales data for whatever reason sometimes there's a year with a model of shoe that sells incredibly well it's in super high demand loved by everybody who bought it and on really rare occasions shoe companies will make a reproduction of that shoe in the old style as it was made almost 20 years ago. So that's the situation on this shoe. It is a current shoe made in a almost vintage reissue. It did sell 25 bucks plus shipping on eBay. Sold. Vintage new old stock sealed in plastic. Lot of 24. True right scratch pads five inches by eight. These are from the new old stock closet that I picked that was just full of vintage office supplies. This was the first set that I stumbled upon and it didn't have a tag on it. So I was kind of disappointed because I just didn't know how I'd list without having any sort of brand to go on. Fortunately, I then found this one. As I picked it up, the label on it just fell off in my hand. The adhesive on it just was really old. So as you can see, I taped it back on and I went ahead and pointed that out that I had taped it back on. But good news because now these are obviously mattress. I can lock them together. Cost of goods, 24 cents, 12 cents per lot of 12. Sold $29.23. Plus when I was making my list of what sold today, I saw that the buyer paid like almost 30 bucks in shipping. Paper is just really heavy. I think these weigh close to 10 pounds. I obviously made a mistake in the listing. I probably just listed them as USPS priority mail without listing them in like a medium flat rate box or possibly a large flat rate box. Either way, I'm pretty sure I have both of those boxes. Whichever one fits, I'll sit it in that, refund the buyer the difference. Sometimes there's too many options for shipping a USPS. The scratch pads fit perfectly in the medium flat rate. However, the medium flat rate with the eBay discount that I get is $13.34 to send. I had an idea that maybe they would fit in the regional B box. That ships at the four pound rate and I'm able to purchase that label with the eBay discount at $11.99. So we're gonna go with this one and we're gonna refund the buyer close to 20 bucks. Hopefully they'll be pretty happy about that. Sold. Vintage new old stock, although some damage to the packaging. Viewmaster mini keychain. Saw this and thought, man, somebody's gonna want that. In 2000, it only cost $2.97 at Walmart. Paid a dollar at a thrift store. Sold $14.99 plus shipping on eBay. Sold. Definitely picked this one up for fun. Sometimes I just love picking up hats that I think no one's gonna buy this. That's what I initially think in my head, but I know that hats like this usually will sell. Vintage, kind of a camo pattern. Waste management of Arkansas. Snapback hat. The Sand Sun tag here is pretty washed out. Probably still would have recognized it just based on the color because I've sold several of these Sand Sun hats, I think in the same video. Fortunately, it's on the plastic though, Sand Sun. Pretty used condition on the inside, some staining. It's weird though, the outside's fairly good condition. It's got the rope, flat bill. Obviously, the curious thing about this one is the Waste Management of Arkansas logo. It's upside down. Came out of our $1 cost of goods hat box. Definitely caught some grief on Facebook when I listed this in different groups. People just sent me ridiculous messages, giving me a hard time about it. It sold for 20 bucks, free shipping. Cool thing about Facebook Marketplace, on occasion they do free shipping labels. Neither the buyer nor the seller pays. So I'm actually getting the 20 bucks minus the 5% Facebook Marketplace selling fee. Thursday night, two sales on eBay to finish out the week. Sold. Used condition, but fortunately with the box. Fisher Price Perfectly Pink Dreamland Soother. It plays lullabies and does a light show. Tested and working. Cost of goods, six bucks at Goodwill. Sold $38.99 plus shipping on eBay. All right, it's getting close to midnight on Thursday. So I guess that's going to do it for the sales for this video. Thanks so much for taking your time to watch this episode of Early Bird Picker Weekly What Sold. Really appreciate you watching. And as always, I'll see all y'all in the next video.